Hi, this is Mike from Mike's and Mike's Reviews on How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at the Sahara Gaming M808W. This is their new dual tempered glass case, which comes included with four of their fantastic Infinity Mirror fans. They've asked us to take a look at it, so today we've gone through, done a little bit of a teardown, see what it's all about, fired up the fans, see what they're like, and we'll go through today, do somewhat of a teardown again in kind of slightly reverse order, and give you a good tour of the case, let you know what it's all about. Pricing for this at the moment, as it stands, at March 2024, looking around about $69.99 on Sahara's website. Also, they do sell on Amazon and eBay as well. So I'll try and put some links for those in the video description. Prices may differ. Sometimes there are better offers on their site, sometimes on Amazon. You know how it goes. Anyway, so this case, as you can see, dual tempered glass. Obviously, one of the pieces is missing from the front there at the moment. Uh, there's got one on the side, which is kind of partially removable. Not easily, but it does come out. And it's a micro ATX case, although it is slightly larger than a micro ATX case, but not as big as you'd expect for a full size ATX. I think it's a really nice case, very compact and very colourful, as you can see from those fans which are pre installed. They've done a pretty decent job on this, so I think the best thing to do, I'll turn all this off now, we'll put it back together as it comes out of the factory, and then we'll do a complete teardown so you can see what it's all about. Okay, so we're back to square one, and this is basically how you get it out of the box. Now, I will say, They've done exactly what they did with the fans, so when it comes to packaging, they've not splashed out on fancy graphics and all that. It's essentially a brown cardboard box, but that brown cardboard box does have all the information on the side of it, giving you all the dimensions, etc. So I'll put that on the screen for you so you can check that out for you now. Essentially, some of the key things in terms of motherboard support, micro ATX or ITX, CPU cooler height up to 160 mil, although I think this case is more tailored towards water cooling. When it comes to graphics cards, anything up to 410 millimeters, because you've got that awfully long stretch there, and the total case length is around about 420 millimeters. The rest of the dimensions are on the screen, so you can check those out for yourselves. But like I said, it has got dual tempered glass, so let's start off with the front. So the front tempered glass panel has a protective coating on, as you can see, so it's kind of slightly uh, opaque at the moment. Four thumb screws on there to remove it, which in the days of swing out panels actually is uh, somewhat of a throwback to see these types of screws included. The glass itself actually has a white rim around it, apart from on this leading edge, which matches up with the other one, giving you the illusion of it being slightly more open than it actually is. With the front panel off, we can now see inside, and again, we've got these four 120mm fans. So these are the M12Ws. They're also daisy chainable as well so these are all slotted together for you out of the factory and something which is actually really unusual which you very very rarely get on a case these days is the fact that the fans actually have inverted blades so even though they're on the bottom we are able to see all of that good rgb stuff coming through but the blades are reversed so it's going to be pulling in cool air from the bottom and pushing it into the chassis most likely directly into the path of your graphics card which is going to be great for keeping your gpu nice and cool the other included fan, which is included on the back there, so that's the 120, and that is done by a sort of umbilical cord, which connects it up together to minimize wiring. As we saw with the M12s, these are all daisy chained, and there's just basically one cable that comes off, so that's gonna give you your four pin PWM, and also your three pin five volt addressable RGB. Nice standard stuff, really do like to see that from Sahara Gaming. The fans themselves, very nice, very colorful, move a reasonable amount of air, and also, when it comes to RPMs, we're looking at around about 200 RPM as the lowest, and they do go up to a rating of 2000 RPM, although in my testing, they were slightly over that, but with fans these days, generally, some 5 to 10% difference is kind of expected. So looking further inside, something which I'm not entirely keen on is the fact that the PCI Express blanking plates on the back, although there is five of them, which is actually a really nice thing to see for a micro ATX case. Generally, they tend to have three or four, so having five gives you a little bit more flexibility. And also, the motherboard mounting is slightly higher as well. So if you've got one of those motherboards where the PCI Express graphics card slot is a little bit lower, then even if you've got a really fat card in there, it's gonna fit in very nicely and not obscure the fans or any of the wiring underneath. The PCI Express blanking plates are captive ones, so you are gonna to have to fold those out. I would suggest trying to do that before you install your motherboard, but do check with your motherboard to see which ones actually need removing, because obviously once you've taken them out, they won't go back in. A lot of attention to detail in here in terms of cable management and where things can go. So you can put in this side section, you can put in two 120 mil fans or two 140 mil fans, or a 280 mil radiator or smaller, should you wish to. They've recessed this really nicely as well, so you could even do like a push-pull configuration. There's a huge gap between the front fan and this section here, so you've got no problems there at all. 
You can as well if you want to mount fans actually behind it. Again, if you're doing push-pull, you've got a 280mm radiator or 240mm, you can have your radiator in the front, the fans in front of that, and then another set of fans behind should you wish to, if that is at all possible with your particular cooler. The top section allows you to install three 120mm fans and will fit very easily a 360mm AIO. If we tilt it back a little bit more, you can see as well, there's plenty of pass-throughs. So if you are putting fans or water cooling up here, it's gonna be very easy to cable manage. And there's a very nice gap between where would the top of the motherboard would be and potentially your cooler and fans. Looking in slightly from the front there or side or whichever way you look at it, you've got pass-throughs as well for cable management. So the motherboard, if it's gonna be micro ATX, is gonna be coming pretty much up, right up to the end here. So you're gonna get your ATX cable and that's gonna flex round then into those channels. That again potentially might interfere with some 280 mil radiators, but your mileage may vary depending on the type of power supply cables you're using. It's nice to see they've gone quite consistent actually in terms of the perforations on this case. We do find these days that perforations do tend to differ depending on the panel and where it is, but most of them, or at least most of the visible ones in here, are the hexagonal ones which do offer generally better airflow. So let's move around to the back. So as you can see, this is a dual sided layout. So all of your kind of mucky stuff is gonna go in the back, such as your power supply, hard drives, etc. And the front section is isolated. So you've got your motherboard IO here. You've got the 120 mil fan mounted there with a little bit of height adjustment up and down. A little bit more ventilation at the top, which is always beneficial as heat rises. Naturally, it's gonna try and pull out of those sections there. You've got a PCI Express blank in place. And also there's a screw there to hold things in place as well. This will support up to an ATX power supply of up to 220 mils in length, although there is quite a lot of room in the back, so potentially if you've got an older, larger one, it will still fit. Most power supplies these days are around about 140 mil, so you shouldn't have any issues there whatsoever, even with ones with captive cabling. Moving around to the back, so you can see we've got plenty of ventilation on the back as well, so this is gonna be exhausting for your fans or your, your AIO if you go for a side-mounted one, and this section here is gonna be maybe for drives if you install some at the top, and here is going to be an air intake or exhaust for your power supply. Removing this, relatively straightforward. So two thumb screws, not captive, unfortunately, but I actually find that makes it easier to put them back in. This just slides out. No additional filtration, not really any needed on there. It is quite fine. So that then gives us a good look in the back. So we've got a removable drive tray here. So you can put two drives in here, either two three and a halfs or two two and a halfs. That is removable, so if you don't want that and you want a bit more room in there for cable management, you can use that. Take out four screws. There's also some pass-throughs as well, so if you are putting drives in there, you can put your cables in there quite nice and easily. At the bottom here, so this is where your power supply is gonna end up living, and potentially all of your kind of leftover cables, that kind of stuff. If we move the cabling out of the way a little bit, you can see a bit better what is going on here. So this is gonna be where the pass-through is gonna be for possibly radiator or fans. Again, two 120s or two 140 mils, radiators. There's also a little thumb screw in there. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up, but there is a thumb screw there. If you undo that thumb screw and four screws on the other side, this front section of glass can actually be removed. So do you need to for any reason, gain a little bit more access. The glass itself is somewhat structural because it does support this top section. So with that glass out and the front glass, this does have a little bit of flex to it. So obviously, yeah, do be careful with that. Don't go leaving heavy things on there when the glass is not attached. So also in the back, we've got our very basic, but actually very functional hub. So this can take two PWM sources and also two addressable RGB sources. There's also a push button on there and there's a two pin connection. So if you want to change the RGB lighting using this hub, you're not gonna use your motherboard's built-in hubs, then you can press that button or press the reset button to toggle through the colors of which there are numerous. When it comes to actually powering the hub, very straightforward, so just using a SATA connection, so you can plug that into one of the SATA leads coming off of your power supply. When it comes to the fans that are included, three pin five volt addressable RGB with a pass through as well. So if you need to daisy chain even more fans, then you can do, just remove the cap and you can install more and daisy chain them. And there's also a four pin PWM, so again, very easy to control the fans rotational speeds on these, like I said, between 200 and 2000 RPM. Next, we'll take a look at the wiring for the front IO. So you've got a dedicated addressable RGB button or switch. So that connects into the hub or perhaps to another hub if you choose to go with a different one. You've also got your individual reset button, power button, power LED, hard drive LED connections there. Shame it's not on a single block connector. Some 
case manufacturers are starting to head in that direction. It'd be nice to see that being universal throughout the ranges. There's also a HD audio connection for the two jacks, which are on the front. And also you've got two leads going into the USB 3.0 header, signifying there's two type A ports. And also for some older peripherals, there is also a USB 2.0, if you want to use that USB 2.0 header, there is a single USB 2.0 on the top. This is actually quite useful for some joysticks. Some older joysticks, Xbox 360, don't always like being plugged into a USB 3 port for some reason. So having a somewhat legacy port is actually quite handy. Being that we've just taken a look at the wiring for the top IO, it's probably a good idea that we take a closer look at that. So we tilt the case down, you can see we've got a, a large power button. Next to that is a reset switch. Then you've got a USB 2.0, dedicated individual headset and mic jacks, two USB 3.0s, and we've got our dedicated LED change button. Above that, we've got some more ventilation or exhausting, and also this magnetic protective cover. I think of this as more as a protective cover rather than actually being filtration because generally air is gonna be coming out of here. So yeah, it's one of those slightly irrelevant things or redundant things. And for some bizarre reason, they've actually made it considerably larger than the actual area which is able to let anything out. So I'm not entirely sure why they've done that, but I suppose bigger is better generally. Again, hexagonal mesh on here and the ability to put three 120 mil fans, two 140 mil fans, 360 mil radiator, two 80 mil radiator, or obviously smaller ones should you wish to. Next, as the doctor said, let's take a look at the bottom. So we've got some padded feet there raised off the deck so there's about an inch of clearance there to allow fresh air to come in because this is going to be your primary air intake this is also filtered i would probably recommend removing the filter just to allow slightly more airflow this unfortunately is one of those kind of old-fashioned metal ones with very tight perforations then we've got the hexagonal mesh there and the fans being that they're on the bottom when they pull in dust it's actually hard for dust to get in the case when those fans are on the bottom because the dust has to kind of fall down then go across 90 degrees and then go back up 90 degrees, which is actually quite a difficult thing for dust to do, unless it's actually forced to do that. If the fans are at highest RPM, then potentially they might do, but it's quite unlikely. So potentially I would suggest leaving this off to get better airflow, especially for those lower RPMs to make the fans quieter. Again, if you want to, you can actually remove these fans, uh, three 120s. You can put your own ones in if you want to, or just leave that area altogether and put the fans possibly in the top in an exhaust situation. The choice essentially is gonna be up to you. Included accessories inside the box. So there is an, another cable for the fans. So if you decide you wanna split up the three at the bottom, there's an additional slotting connection here. Uh, if you think kind of Lian Lee Unifan SL 120s, 140s, it's a very similar sort of deal. So you get an additional one of those included if you do wanna split the fans up. Possibly if you don't want the umbilical cord joining the bottom ones and this one, you want to have those wired separately, then you can do that with that additional cable. You also get a bunch of cable ties and also all the fittings you possibly need, screws, etc. All nicely done, colour coded in chrome rather than being black so they don't stick out like a sore thumb. So I think that is pretty much it for a tour of the Sahara Gaming M808W. I've got to say, I'm actually very impressed. Sahara Gaming... Some of the older cases, maybe four or five years ago, maybe even longer than that, I'm not too sure, it's been a while, but some of their original cases were very much on the cheap and cheerful side. They were slightly flimsy, not the greatest fans, sometimes quite poor fan controllers, which had limited functionality. Whereas this, I think they've actually come a very long way in a relatively short time. They seem to have found a uh, design factory which they can put their logo on. There's actually a Sahara Gaming logo on the glass, so they've spent a bit of money doing that. I think this is a very good setup and if you think about it in terms of cost wise you break it down a little bit the three fans at the bottom there although really those aren't available separately but the traditional blades with the normal intake those are 35 pounds for the set or 39 in some places so that's for three fans and the controller so if you take that out of the equation you've got an additional fan there you've got the really nice case lots of tempered glass lots of filtration and you get all of that for around about 70 pounds in the uk which i think is actually a pretty fair value for money it's a very nice case and if micro ATX is your thing, there isn't a huge amount of choice on the market. If you're going ATX, then the world is your oyster. Pretty much everything caters for ATX, but micro ATX is one of those sizes which often gets overlooked. So I'm really glad that Sahara have done this. I think it's a, a nice little case. I'm looking forward to doing a build in this and we'll probably be using the M12 fans, which we've got the other three pack, just to kind of populate these side sections and just fill it out a little bit more. Maybe a 360 mil rad in the top 
we'll see how things go. But if you want to see how that build goes, you're going to have to subscribe to the channel, in which case you can click on the subscribe button, then the chime notification, and that way you'll be notified of future video releases. I think that's going to wrap this one up. Very impressed overall. Well done, Sahara Gaming. Let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.